Yes, today um, I'm going to be sharing this segment, this new segment on how to study the Bible. But before we do that, I'd like to invite everyone who's able to join me in a word of prayer. Dear Father in heaven, we thank you for giving us your word. We pray that you will please help us to understand what this book means to us. Help us to find your word to be the voice of God speaking to our soul. We desire answers. We desire um, true understanding and understanding for a want of which many are perishing. We pray that we can come closer to you. And as we spend time seeking to understand your will, we know that you have promised that you will give us wisdom to those who lack. And so for this wisdom we pray, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, so our first um, tip for today is take notes. This is the... Um, this is what I'd like to share with us today, the importance of taking notes and how to take notes. There is a verse in Acts chapter 17 and verse 11 where scripture says, these, speaking of the Bereans, they were more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily whether those things were so. So the Bereans are a very interesting group because what made them noble was that they searched the scriptures daily. They received the word with readiness. They were willing to apply those things to their life. They were ready to accept it if it were true. They were, their minds were not narrowed by prejudice, that they were not willing to see anything than their preconceived ideas. They wanted to know the truth and when they would hear the sermons falling from the lips of Paul, they didn't just accept it as fact based on what the man said. They searched the scriptures to see whether these things were so. They wanted to make sure that the word of God really taught what was being shared. So how, my question to you is how are you going to be like the Bereans to, sure, you may be willing to accept it, but how are you going to be able to see whether these things are so unless you take notes? When I um, do Bible studies with any new contacts, when I'm doing Bible work, this is one of the very first verses that I will turn to in, um, in my studies with them, Acts 17, 11, And um, I let them know any time the Bible is being spoken of, You want to take notes and ref and take note of the references in your notes. So don't just accept what is being spoken. Even now, take notes of all the different references. And so when I started, what are you doing? Oh, sorry. When I started uh, taking notes, I started with a piece of paper. And this piece of paper... Um, I would take notes of the sermons that I was listening on, but then I found that with a piece of paper, um, then I'd get another paper, and then another, and then I've got these other papers. Sometimes I'd lose them. Sometimes I wouldn't know what to do with them, and I'd, um, I found that they weren't a very sustainable way to take notes. It's better than nothing, but it wasn't really long-term. It, it didn't help me as much. So I upgraded to a journal. And I was at a camp meeting. I remember taking this journal and I dedicated it. I said, this journal is going to be my Bible study notes. Anytime the Bible is spoken of, I'm going to take notes. And at first, it was difficult because I would turn in my Bible. The preacher would say a verse. I'd turn in my Bible and I'd find it and then try to jot it down and then read it with them and then try to like take a something really quick because like, why did like, the key thought in that verse. And at first, I would miss some of what the the preacher would say, and that kind of discouraged me from taking notes. It's like, oh no, it's like, if I take notes, I'm going to miss some of what he says, but if I only listen to what he says and I don't take notes, I won't be like a Berean. And it was like a catch-22. I didn't know what to do. So I persevered. I kept taking notes because I knew, like the Bereans, what good is it if I just hear the sermon and I have nothing to show for myself at the end to take notes later. 
So at that camp meeting, there was one of the presenters who had this little, he had this little um, netbook the size of a um, Bible. I've never really seen a little little laptop like that. And um, I, after his talk, I came up to him. I said, hey, that reminds me of this Bible verse that I was reading. It was really interesting. And he's like, oh, great. And he had it. And he had this weird program on it. And um, he like pulled up. He had all of his notes on these different topics. He clicked the topic that we were talking about. And then it popped up. His screen is like a page in my journal where he had all his personal notes. And he added the verse that I just told him about it and put through it in his notes. And I saw that and I was like, whoa, what is that? It's like, I want to know what that is. I didn't know at the time. But um, I was like, okay, I know what I want. From that camp meeting forward, I went out to go search for a, I didn't know they were called netbooks at the time, but I searched for a netbook. And I'm like, I want to have what he had. And so I got a netbook. It was about the size of a Bible and it was small. I was only looking for, I think, like three things. One, affordable. Two, very long battery because I'm going to be spending a lot of hours studying the Bible. And three, I want a small screen. Those are the only three things I looked for. And I found one. It was one that was like, I think it was $200, bought it. And then the next day it went on sale. So I returned it. And then I bought it again for $50 less. The Lord blessed. And that was when I was, um, I was probably 17 and uh, $150 is a lot. And the only thing I was going to use this for was for the Bible and the, the CD-ROM for my favorite Christian authors to be able to study. So um, both of these things together, um, that's the only thing I used it for. And, I, and it, the battery lasted for about eight hours, 10 hours if you had the screen dim. So it worked out really well. I used that for a lot of the videos and I found there was a program called eSword that was uh, super helpful to be able to use. eSword to study the Bible, we had on our YouTube channel a video called how to use and why you should use eSword to study the Bible. Um, that was one of our most watched videos. A lot of people like that. It's just a wonderful free program. It's the sword of the spirit with an electronic edge, therefore E sword. And, um, it just has, it simplifies in a great degree, um, your ability to search up every verse that has a certain word. It has a Crudence concordance, it has strong concordance. It has, um, treasury scriptural knowledge, which is a wonderful tool. It has all these nice things all in one program all on one screen and you can just hover over it and you're already there at the Bible verse. You don't have to turn and flip and it, you can learn what took others months to learn. You can learn it in weeks with eSword. It's wonderful. So I took all my notes there, but then, uh, recently 2017, I realized that all the notes that I had on every subject, any time that the Bible would be spoken of, I'd be taking notes. Um, but then, um, it would be hard to share those notes with other people. So what I would do is like if someone was using eSword, I would share with them the file and that was very well. But then when it came for me to receive the files from my friends, it was a lot harder to find. So I found that it wasn't very duplicatable to be able to, to have all of my notes just on eSword and in an eSword format that only they could use. And so I was like, how can I give people the most up-to-date version? And therefore, I found what is called Google Docs. And Google Docs was very helpful. I started to transfer all of my Bible study notes from, Google, from eSword to Google Docs. And that will sync with a phone, a tablet, a computer, whatever, um, in ways that eSword doesn't. So I still use eSword to take notes on the Bible, but then, or I'll, I'll use it to look up the references and find verses, but I'll use Google Docs to actually take my notes. And it just opened the whole world of being able to share with others. Literally every subject that, almost every subject that I've ever studied is found on eSword or Google Docs. So it, it allows me to be able to share through modern publishing these topics with people um, 
who were not there in the studies that I was. Amen. Amen. So um, there's another reason why we should take notes. In Matthew chapter 24, verse 30, verse 3 and 4, Jesus said, speaking of the last days, um, actually the disciples actually came to Jesus privately and they said, tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of your coming and the end of the world? And the first words out of Jesus' mouth, Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man, what? Deceive, Deceive you. So, um, Jesus said in the last days, there's going to be a lot of deception. It's so essential that we take notes because we can review those notes to see if the Word of God um, truly says that. We're actually um, warned in 2 Timothy 3.13 that, but evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. One of the scariest things about being deceived is that you don't know that you're actually deceived. Do you think people make it like consciously make the decision, um, generally speaking, saying, hey, I want to be deceived today. No. I want to go to this meeting and be deceived. Or I want to uh, listen to error so that I can accept wrong ideas. Mm -hmm. It's not something people generally do on purpose. So the Bible says that not only are people deceiving, but they themselves are deceived. So it's so essential that we can, in order to be noble like the Bereans, we have to take notes and we have to go over our notes, including these. A next verse, uh, Proverbs 14, 15. The wise man once said, The simple believeth every word, but the prudent man looketh well to his going. Now, this is kind of interesting. We might say like, oh yeah, I'm a, like, I'm a simple person. I got a simple mind, so I just believe everything. Well, in scripture, to be simple is not a good thing. We could see, we can compare it with Proverbs 9.13. Notice what the word simple means. A foolish woman is clamorous. She is what? Simple. Simple and knoweth nothing. God does not want you to be simple or foolish, not knowing anything. But we were told that the simple believe every word. But the prudent man, the wise man, they look well at their going. They take notes. They don't just accept everything they hear from the preacher. They, their religion is not based on a DVD religion or a YouTube religion. They're not just consuming video content all the time and listening to sermons and just accepting what is being spoken. They study for themselves, like the Bereans, to see whether these things are so. And the only way you can do that is to take notes. We see in Matthew chapter 25, there is a parable of the wise and the foolish virgins. Five of them were wise, they were saved. The five that were foolish, they were lost. God doesn't want us to be foolish or simple. God wants us to be the prudent virgins, the wise virgins that, like the Bereans, take notes and study those notes. One of the best ways to learn is to teach, right? So that's the law of imparting. Give and it shall be given unto you. So if you want more understanding of God's word, you have to impart that which you already have. So here is your opportunity to engage in missionary work. How many of us, when we study the Bible, there, it, it's not possible for you, for Christ to live in you and there not be a missionary spirit. If Christ is abiding in you, you're going to naturally want to share that with those around you. So here's your opportunity to be a missionary. Here are, I'm going to give you four simple steps for effective missionary labors. Number one, when you listen to interesting discourses, take notes of the passages that the presenter uses. And that could be on eSword journal, um, a written journal, or on Google Docs, however you do it. Take notes on the passages. Number two, 
privately review the subject carefully. I believe this is one of the most important parts of listening to a sermon is reviewing the subject carefully, allowing God to confirm or deny the message that was spoken. And you don't have time to process things just by hearing the sermon. You have to do this privately in the closet with God. This is how you can have a personal walk with Him and understand His Word for yourself. Step number three. After faithful study, give a synopsis of the discourses in the form of Bible readings. A Bible reading is the format that you see. Christina did a wonderful job uh, for the lesson study. It's question, Bible text. Question, Bible text. Question, Bible text. Many times in the sermons, the uh, minister will be able to ask a question and then they'll give the Bible answer. So if it's true, you will be able to have your notes, the Bible answer. All you do is ask the question and whoever um, you'll be able to give a synopsis or a, a, a summary of what the discourse was. Number Step number four, share with those who didn't attend the meeting. What a way to be able to share. Now, you might be thinking, well, who would I share with? If I took notes um, and you're starting to recognize like I was recognizing, my notes are not just mine to study personally. My notes are for me to go out and teach. If I truly want to understand these subjects, I need to impart this knowledge to those around me. So let me give you some examples of people to share with. One example, you can share with fellow church members. And what I like to do is, uh, especially for new people, you can just go to your church member and say, like, the temptation usually comes, oh, but they already know this. And, hey, that may be true, that may not be true. You'd be surprised. But one thing that you can do with your church members, if you feel that way, is say, hey, I would like to practice. Can I practice on you? I'd like to teach. I was given an assignment today at online church that I should take notes and share with someone the notes that I took. Do you mind if I practice sharing with you the notes that I've been learning in an interesting discourse? So that practice approach, go to your fellow church members. Next it is um, a family, family who's willing to listen to you. I'm sure most of you who are watching, who are here, have family that if you just called them on the phone or you went to their house or um, you just spoke to them and say, hey, um, sister, Sarah, that's my sister's name. Sarah, I was studying something really neat. It was interesting. And I want to be able to share with someone. Can I practice on you? May and, and maybe if you feel uncomfortable, you can say, I, I kind of feel uncomfortable sharing with someone else right now, but I realized that this was... Uh, this needs to be shared. Can I start with you? And how many of your family members would not be supportive enough to give you their ear to be able to listen? I'm sure they will. So the next group, another example, you can share with close friends who want to support your group, your growth. It's again, the practice. Even if they don't, um, even if it's new to them, what you're sharing, or maybe they don't really agree as much, they are willing to listen just to support your growth. Um, another class of people are acquaintances, maybe even co-workers who are not allergic to God or the Bible. Uh, maybe you've studied with or you've talked to someone at work and, um, and you've, you've sensed that they were open. I know when um, I was teaching a missionary uh, training school over in Oregon, I was a Bible teacher for two years, one of the activities we did is we had them go through their phone contacts and their email and their Facebook and to find people who would be interested in receiving a Bible study. And uh, there was one student especially who scheduled his week packed with Bible studies of acquaintances and co-workers who were interested in what he was sharing in times past, but now he had an opportunity to share what he knew. And we sent him out by two. So, and he was doing studies over the, over the phone, um, and you can too. Okay, another example, you can go to your neighbors of your home 
or the neighbors in the community surrounding your church. Either one, these are great mission fields to be able to share with. I like to start, if I'm knocking on their door, I like to say, hey, my name is Enoch Leffingwell. I am your neighbor, or um, I am, I'm, con- I'm located in behalf of uh, this church over here. You know that one in the neighborhood? Oh, yeah. So I'm a member of that church, and I, um, we're, I'm taking prayer requests. I want to be able to pray for this community. Are there any prayers that I can um, petition for you? And they're just like, wow, you guys just want to come to pray? This is great. Yeah, we, we need prayer for this and this. And they open their heart. And then you come back next week and, and you take notes. You pray for them through the week. You write their name and their petition. So when you knock on their door again, you say, hey, I was praying for Joey. I heard he had a leg injury in the hospital. Is he out? Is he doing better? How's his health? I want you to know that we're praying for him. And when you come back that second time, hearts are melted even more. And they are ready. And they are wanting. And at that time, you can say, great, if there's anything else I could pray for, then um, let me know. And you have your pen, your clipboard. You're ready to write your prayer list. And you can leave them with a study guide, a Bible reading. Or you can offer to go through scriptures with them right there or schedule a time to meet them later great way to reach out to your neighbors around your home or neighbors around the community of your church another class is um, by attending profitable social gatherings that you enjoy you can meet new people those are people you'll often find are willing to listen to your bible readings another you could um, invite your contacts You can invite your contacts to your home and you can conduct your Bible readings in your home in a house meeting. A lot of people are are interested in doing things. They're not invited to socialize anymore. A lot of people are are not um, doing that as much. So when you give them an invitation, they're waiting for it. They crave that social interaction. And many would be interested in listening to your Bible readings if you simply opened your home to do a cottage meeting at your house. Another great way that is often um, overlooked is going live on Facebook, Periscope, YouTube, or other social media platforms. If you go live, it's kind of like street preaching, open air messages. It's an instant way to gain an audience very quickly. I went live one of my first times and there was almost, there was like 3,000 or 4,000 people who were able to watch um, the live broadcast that I did on my Facebook profile called The Day I Decided to Quit Being a Christian. That really got some attention. And um, all I was sitting in a parking, or I was standing in a parking lot where I almost, qu- where I decided to quit being a Christian. And I was just sharing my testimony and I was encouraging others to keep pressing on. And th- there's, Although in the parking lot, there was maybe a few hundred and they weren't paying attention to me. But through the social media and modern publishing, I was able to reach thousands of people. There would have been a sea that would fill up a stadium that listened to that uh, live message. It's incredible. Another tip is um, Sundays. These are perfect days for devoting to such missionary efforts. They're already thinking about God. And um, you can share these Bible readings. You can also, uh, one thing that we want to do is to start hosting um, consistent, um, Christina, we want to start hosting uh, consistent online phone or video conference meetings. Um, We want to be able to do some Bible studies every week. That way people can join. We've done that in times past and it's a really great way to reach the youth. A lot of people have been requesting it lately, so we're going to do that more. We're going to do it for you, and people are able to join in, and you can start your own small group Bible studies. Um, Maybe you're out in the country, or maybe you um, feel more comfortable with online things. That's where a lot of people are going today. So you can do a phone conference call. You can do a video conference using Google Hangouts, Zoom, uh, whatever that may be. But you can share your Bible readings, the notes that you took, there. It's a platform open to all of us for free that we can be medical, we could be missionaries today. 
So um, that is my tip for how to study the Bible. It's to take notes and then share with others the notes that you took.